In this problem, we're told a ball is kicked with an initial velocity of 16 meters per second in the horizontal direction and 12 meters per second in the vertical direction. A, at what speed does the ball hit the ground? B, for how long does the ball remain in the air? And C, what maximum height is obtained by the ball? So the first thing you always should do is draw what's going on. So we have this ball, it's gonna be kicked and it's gonna go in a motion like this. And we know the initial velocity, v sub zero in the x, is gonna be 16 meters per second, that's horizontal, and the vertical is gonna be 12 meters per second. So I think the easiest way to solve this is just by approaching each problem. So let's just start with A. So for A, we're trying to find at what speed does the ball hit the ground? And so for a problem like this, uh, if something lands with the same, uh, it's gonna land right, we say this is zero and we'll say this is zero in terms of Y. If it lands at the same elevation as where it begins, the initial velocity and the final velocity are going to be the exact same. But we don't know the initial velocity yet, we just know the components of it. So what we need to do is find the initial velocity and then that's gonna be the final velocity. So what we wanna do is find the initial velocity, and the way we do that is by taking uh, the resultant, right? We have the x and the y, so basically use Pythagorean. So what you can do to find the resultant, right, is by using a Pythagorean. So if we say this is a, this is b, and this is c, this would be the velocity in the x, this is the velocity in the y, and what we're trying to do is find c. So we know c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and we're solving for c, which is uh, this part right here, so it's just gonna be equal to a squared plus b squared. Right, you just square root to get rid of the square. So it's just gonna be equal to the square root of a, which we're gonna say is 16, right? We'll say a is the x, right? So 16 squared plus, and then b is gonna be 12 squared, right? Which is the y. So it's gonna be equal to the square root of 16 squared plus 12 squared. And when you do this, you get the square root of 400, which is just equal to 20. So it's gonna be 20 and then it's meters per second. So this is the initial right, the initial velocity, but we know the initial is gonna be the same as the final because it lands at the same elevation. So V final in this problem is gonna be equal to 20 meters per second. So this is gonna be the answer to the first part. So uh, at what speed does the ball hit the ground, right? That's its final velocity, so 20 meters per second. Now let's move on to B. So for B, we're trying to find how long does the ball remain in the air? So for this one, we're gonna be using kinematics, but there's something you need to know. So for how long does the ball remain in the air? What we're gonna do is say, uh, what we're going to use, right, is a little trick, which basically tells us at the maximum point, we know its final velocity is going to be zero. So that's just something you need to know. The velocity at its highest point is zero. And what that means is if we can find, right, using this, knowing this is zero, what we can do is find how long this takes. And then we know that we're reaching its highest point, it's going to take the same amount of time as it did to reach it to fall to the ground. So essentially, if you can find how long this takes, you just multiply by two, and that's gonna be how long it's in the air. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna use this formula here, V equals V sub zero plus A times T. But what we're gonna do is focus on the Y direction. And the reason that is, is because it's velocity in the Y is zero. So keep that in mind. So the final velocity, right, V Y equals V sub zero Y plus A Y times T. So we know the final velocity in the Y is gonna be zero because it's reaching its maximum point. So zero is equal to the initial velocity in the y, which we know is going to be 12, plus the acceleration. Uh, the acceleration in the y is just gonna be uh, due to gravity, right? So a is gonna be equal to minus 9.81. So minus 9.8 times t. And so if you go ahead and minus 12 from both sides, minus 12, you'll get minus 12 equals minus 9.8 divided by t. You can use minus 9.81 or 9.8. I'm just gonna use uh, 9.8 and then basically just divide, so 12 divided by 9.8. And when you do that, what you're gonna get is T equals 1.2244. So this is basically equal to one point, uh, we'll just say two, or we'll just leave it like this, right? So T equals 1.2244 seconds. And keep in mind what we just solved for. We basically solved for how long this took, but we know it's gonna be double for it to reach the ground. So we just wanna multiply it by two. So if you multiply your answer by two, you're basically gonna get T equals 2.4489. So seconds, you can just round, I'm gonna round to 2.45 seconds. So 2.45 seconds, that's gonna be how long, or about how long uh, it's gonna be in the air. So this is your answer to B. So this was A. Now let's move on to C. So for C, we're trying to find the maximum height obtained by the ball. And so we're gonna do a similar thing we did here. And what we know about the maximum height of the ball is when its velocity is zero. So just like we use the velocity here to find the halfway point, we're just using it to find its maximum point. Because once it's at its maximum point, its velocity is equal to zero in the y. So 
for this one, what we're going to be using is a different formula because we solve for t this time, but what we're going to be solving for is uh, the change in y this time. So the one we're going to use is going to be this one right here. v squared, but keep in mind we're focusing on the y, so v squared y, or v sub y squared, is equal to v sub 0 y squared plus 2 times a sub y times delta y. So remember how I said at its highest point, its final velocity is 0 in the y, so it's 0 squared, which is just 0, is equal to the initial velocity in the y squared. The initial velocity is 12, so 12 squared is going to be 144, plus 2 times the acceleration in the y, right, which is minus 9.8 times delta y. So if we want to solve for it, minus 144 from both sides, that'll get rid of that. Minus 144 is equal to 2 times minus 9.8 times the change in the y, and then divide by both of these. So basically you're going to get minus 144 divided by 2 times minus 9.8. Keep in mind the minuses are going to cancel. So it's 144 divided by uh, 2 times uh, 9.8. And so when you go ahead and do this, what you're going to get is that it equals 7 points, or delta y is equal to 7.3469. So it's going to be equal to about 7.35. So 7.35, and then the units are going to be meters per, or not meters per second, sorry, just meters. So about 7.35 meters, that's going to be its maximum height, right? So at this point, uh, right, so it's going to travel 7.53 meters when its velocity is zero, meaning at its maximum point. So uh, the maximum height obtained by the ball is 7.35 meters. So this is your answer to C. Uh, this was your answer to B, and this was your answer to A. But yeah, so these are your answers and hopefully you found this useful.